Today we're going to make a chicken pot pie. Now this turned into a series on one 12 meals, one chicken. I posted a short on it. I've posted some of my meals on this. Um, I did not post how I cooked the chicken. If you want to know how I cooked the chicken, uh, I think it's Bon Appetit. And I left a comment on one of my other videos on, I think it was how to make fritters. Someone commented on, oh, you need to tie the legs up and you'll have a better looking chicken. Now my complaint with the chicken was that the breast skin was all torn. And I've had chickens lately with the leg torn. So if you're looking for a beautiful chicken, these days it seems like it's going to be difficult to come by. So, Something's going on with the processing. Um, that was my complaint. Now this uh, recipe on Bon Appetit, you actually slice open your chicken legs and you let it cook that way because you'll know when the chicken is done when the juice in the leg area is clear. And I cook every chicken like that now because... Um, it is the most moist chicken I've ever had. So that's why I cook my legs, uh, chicken with the legs open. In fact, I cut the thigh open more so it really splays out and everything is moist on the chicken. And that recipe you do, um, you basically cut open the thighs of the chicken. You make sure your chicken's dry. You melt a stick of butter, which I never do. I do a half stick of butter if I do it. Um, and then you cut open a lemon and you cut open a full bulb of garlic and you bake your chicken until those juices run clear in the thigh. And let me tell you that with the lemon and garlic, it's over the top. Now this one I just did with garlic. I left it simple, but that is how I cook all my chickens now. So let's go on to this this recipe, you'll need a pie pan, of course. This is a deep one. I have egg wash. Now, you don't have to have an egg wash. It's just an egg with about a tablespoon of water in it, beaten. I do ready-made pie crust because I am not a pastry person, and I do not bake. So, that is not my forte. I have some bouillon some veg all because this is quick easy simple uh i will put some pepper in did i say butter anyway i have chicken um and that's pretty much over a cup of chicken there and then i have some flour and my pan so let's get going we're going to make a roux first and then um we'll add our vegetables now, I only do one crust. I do a top crust. Um, number one, it's economical. Number two, it's a little bit healthier than having a bottom crust and a top crust. So, and I found we're just as happy with only a top crust. So, anyone can do this. It is pretty darn simple. Let's get going. All right, let's get started. I have... Um, about two tablespoons of butter that I'm going to put in here. We're going to let that melt. And you're going to want to whisk, if, if you're like me, I need a whisk to make my gravy smooth. Oh, and I meant to mention we do need some milk as well. So once this gets melted, I'm going to go ahead and put my um, pepper in. I like a lot of pepper. I think the grain helps break up some of the lumps too of the flour once you start going. Now the captain doesn't like so much um, pepper, but I love it. I love it. <clears throat> 
Well, this is getting melted. I'm going to go ahead and add my um, flour in now. I've kind of made this a lot, so kind of just I. I've got one heaping large spoon of flour. I'm going to go in with two and let's do three. See what we get. We're going to toast this just a little bit because you don't want that raw flour. <clears throat> You know what? I'm going to add my shut down. I usually do like three heaping spoons of, or a heaping spoon of flour to one tablespoon of butter. That's a pretty good rule of thumb while you're cooking it. Um, and I just didn't use it. So there we go. Another little thing of butter, and we're gonna let this, like I said, cook a little bit. Sorry for my hand. I'm turning the stove up to about medium high to get this part done and get this butter melted. Pardon me again. That's a pretty good ratio. Sometimes you just have to shake the whisk to get everything back down in the pan. I bought these silicone um, utensils for the videos. They work quite well. They're not as noisy. So, so yeah, we give that a little time. I'm going to throw in um, you can use whatever you want. A couple hunks of bouillon. Uh, I'm going to use a it's probably about two teaspoons of bouillon here. and whisk that in. Ooh, smell. Smells so good already, y'all. So here I just add milk. And I use, this is like a medium saucepan. So I put, I like to put in a little bit of milk and then get everything smooth. It's all coming together really nice almost like a thick paste and that helps smooth out the lumps before you add the rest of the milk in now you want a good amount so I have this it's about I don't know finger length from the top. <laughs> Do y'all like my measurements? I'm sorry. I just, this is the way I cook. Um, I'd say it's about four cups of milk. That's what it looks like. So we are going to continue to whisk this. Let this get good and creamy. And we're going to bring this up to a boil. Now, sometimes your stuff gets caught in here. I'm going to just knock off those lumps with the knife. And I'm going to kind of mash all this to break those little pieces up of the paste. 
Now, veg all has seven vegetables. Uh, it also contains um, onion extract, but uh, I want some actual onion pieces, and I'm not going to cut up an onion. I'm just going to use some minced onion here to enhance the flavor a bit. I like garlic powder, so I'm going to add a little bit of garlic powder here. And I also like poultry seasoning. So I'm going to add a good, oh, this is a brand new one. because I really like poultry seasoning. Uh, I'm gonna add maybe half a cup, uh, quarter cup full. It looks to be about a teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Well, poultry seasoning has a little bit of everything. It has thyme, marjoram, rosemary, sage, black pepper, and just a touch of nutmeg. You know, nutmeg was very popular with our early settlers. It went in so many foods. So this really gives it a holiday type of uh, flavor, too, with the poultry seasoning in there. So we're going to let this continue to cook until till it comes to a boil and we'll want to you know continue to stir this because your milk and flour will tend to stick to the pan if you don't stir constantly so or frequently so try to do that and <laughs> not get distracted um, which I've done myself so that's why I gave the warning that I'll be back in just a second. Okay, I've done a little cleanup. My uh, oven is preheated to 350. In case I didn't mention that earlier. This is getting to beginning to thicken. So we want it just a little bit thicker. Now the reason I leave some room here and I kind of eye this measurement is because I definitely need some room so it doesn't bubble oil over. And I like to add the chicken in there for a bit once it thickens to my liking. And I also will add the, <clears throat> sometimes add the vegetables in here and then pour it all into the dish at the same time. Now you don't need to grease this dish or butter this dish or anything. It will be fine. So, wow, this is thickening up nicely. We've gotten to the point here where it'll cover the spoon and stay covered, so that's good. Just a little bit. Now this will continue to thicken in the uh, oven as everything evaporates. Now I do recommend putting aluminum foil down or putting this on a baking tray um, because it does spill over sometimes. And that's in general with pies. If you ever make a pie, always put something under it. Oh yeah, this is beautifully thickened. This is perfect. You know, sometimes I surprise myself because I never know what, because I don't measure a lot of stuff and I eye it, sometimes it'll turn out a little different. I don't know, maybe sometimes the humidity or the heat or dryness could affect it. So we got a good bubble here. It is boiling, it is happy. Look at all that goodness there, see that? It is really thick like a gravy would be.
so any of those lumps you see that's that's not flour that's the um the onion and the first time i ever used onion like that the dried onion in here i was like what is as it lumpy no it's just the onion so let's put oh it's getting a little too happy let's pull this off a little bit hopefully yeah you can see me there i'm gonna put go ahead and put the chicken in This is the fun part of everything. And my, uh, and my pastry to the side. I went ahead and just dumped my vegetables into the pie plate here. Going to move this out of the way because I do need to make sure this stays clean. I'm not getting the moisture on it. All right, be right back. I'm going to swing you here to the other side. Now I'm going to take this uh, sauce and chicken and just pour it right into the container here. Sorry, I'm scrape it out a little bit. All right, I'm seeing that pretty much fills it up, buzz up, baby. So, yeah. So, that is pretty full pie. I'm just going to mix it in the container just a little bit. Probably put a little too much in here. But I don't want to take it out. It'll pretty much stay in there. We'll see how much overflow we get. We, Like I said, all pies overflow, so there will be some of that. Mm. Tastes fabulous. All right, on to the next part. Don't let that sit a minute. Let off some steam. <laughs> All right. Let's go on to this part. So, like I said, I am not a pastry person at all. So, I have, you know, put your favorite. You want to make it yourself? That's great. You prefer a boxed crust or frozen. You do what you like. These are the same crust I use for my little um, Gaillette pies from my for my berries from my orchard. I'm just going to gently unroll this. And then what I like to do is you have to have some kind of venting. If you don't, it's definitely going to spill over the edge of your dish here for certain. So all pies like this kind of need a venting. So I have a little decorative. You can use... You know, sometimes I don't feel like getting out my cutters or even I have little biscuit cutters. And what I'll do is just kind of chop little areas of the pie crust open. Um, but it's fall. I'm feeling festive. So we're going to do a little fall leaf here. We're going to just cut down through that whole corner. Quarter. 
and we pop our leaves out. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, happy Indigenous Day, Thanksgiving Day to uh, Canada. <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies from picking that um, uh, green onion for uh, my Korean short rib recipe is really getting to me. Of course, I had quarters. <laughs> <coughs> but I'm not going to fight it. I ended up with two. Let me get some water. I'll be right back. All right. So there you go. When it's unwrapped, you have four little leaf shapes, and I have these two leaves here. Now I'm going to roll this out just a little bit because I'm going to try and cover the pie plate. Normally I don't do this, but with it being so um, overfilled, Kind of. I'm just going to do that. Now, of course, if I left the vegetables and the chicken separate from the gravy, <coughs> excuse me, this would not be a problem. So, <laughs> we're learning lessons together. So, let me pull this up again. Just quarter it. We're going to bring our dish over. Um right here and oh no do you see that <laughs> it's all right that's the underside oh so it looks perfect just gonna press this down around here like i said we're just Trying to keep the uh, everything from overspilling too much. Hopefully everything will overflow here. And you may not even know that those are leaves by the time it's done. So, oops. Sorry. Hopefully you saw that. So here I'm going to go in with an egg wash. Like I said, this is optional. Um, today I'm feeling a little fancy. What this will do is give a beautiful um, shine to the pie. You don't want to do too much. Just as light as you can get it. Without getting into the uh, crevice here of the where the leaves are but that'll be a great vent for this filling and like I said you do this with fruit pies too so there we are now if we had four of these leaves it'd be great but we don't so we're just going to stick them here and here and my pie crust was a little bit um, really thawed, very soft. So that's why the um, crust all kind of stuck together there. And I'm going to line, um, gonna line my oven rack with aluminum foil and then we're going to put this in the oven at 350 for about 40 minutes. The chicken pot pie just came out of the oven after 40 minutes. It is absolutely beautiful and we ended up with no overflow which is great. It's always good. Our vents here were large enough with our little uh, festive leaves for fall. And this is going to be a wonderful dinner tomorrow. I'm still working on some 
house maintenance projects. So I won't have to cook dinner tomorrow night. It is done. So I'm loving that. Now this is uh, kind of part of what I did. Uh, 12 meals, one chicken. And um, yeah, I'm ready to dig in now. But I have another meal planned for tonight. So, and I've been filming that for you. It's Korean barbecue galbi or kalbi, galbi. You can call it either one, but it's basically short ribs and a marinade. And I'm going to heat up the grill here in a minute and get those going. But check out uh, those videos, like, subscribe, and I will see y'all later. Take care.